Hey guys, today we are working with a vintage pattern. We are going to do that robe with a vintage material taffeta. So let's go. This pattern has been used before. My customer bought it in a vintage store and he wanted me to do this robe for him. So we will see what we can find. These are the instructions. It looks like they are clear, but you see, it was 45 cents. So these are supposed to be the pieces and I hope that I will find them all. Oh, that's for the pocket. This is for the front. That's the belt part. They know what they're doing. That's the back. That's the one part of the sleeve. Ooh, that's the color. Oh, nice. We'll have fun today. And that's the under sleeve. So we are going to check all the instructions. It has the lay down for the material. And it has all the instructions to sew the whole thing. It's good to, to take a, a little look of it and then we can sew. So the instructions uh, show how to lay down the material. And um, if your material is 35, 39, or 54, my material is 54, so I use this, this kind of lay down. So because we are working with the size small to medium uh, for, for this customer, so we are just um, laying down exactly, exactly in the same way. So I took every pattern and I put it the same way. I, until now, I have put it until here because my table is not that long. But I will cut first that and then I will move the fabric. So I'm starting from the corner. From the corner down, I will start to cut and then I stretch it the best I can. Pin it. And then pin it. You could draw it too and then remove the pattern. That's another way. So this was this one. Now the pocket. It shows the picture that the pocket is very close because the other will be very close too. So let's do it. I think we will have to draw it. So for that, I think um, my best bet is to use this pen, but I will try first in the material. And let's just, yes! It disappears, so no problem. To save the pattern, it seems that the pattern has to be very, very, very close to each other so it works with the amount of material and the customer told me you know if the pattern says that much and i bought that much for the back i will just start but i won't trace the whole back it says center back place this into the fold so they cut it a little just a tiny bit bigger so i will put it in the right place so I'll, I'll, I'll get back to the pattern again. You see, they left a little space. So the curve of this sleeve can fit. So you see how they did? They put this one very, very, very close here because I have to, to make this one, but it has to be straight here and that fold there. So that's why you have to go as much as you can here. So very close, we will make it very very close you see pin it in place just to be sure that i have everything right oh, they are genius these people so here i'll put this one and you see perfect so i will draw the sleeves now We will use a little bit of interfacing to, so it will take up 
better shape. I don't know if that says in the instructions says that or not, but um, believe me, this is a very, very good aspect. I use Google interface. But in this case, because it's retro, I want to use this kind of pelon. This is uh, what they were supposed to have at that time. I will cut my piece. Let me mark it with my shock. I will mark it, but then I will cut it a little bit smaller than the mark. When you cut the interfacing, you cut it just a tiny bit smaller than you mark, what you mark. Let me use my smaller scissor. I will mark my notch. Okay. The right side, this is the wrong side. So I will glue this one to the wrong side. The instruction says to start sewing the shoulders. So for what it says, the back shoulder is a little bit longer. So they want me to ease. I'll show you what I do. I just uh, make one seam like that, from there to there, and then another seam at the other shoulder. This seam by itself should gather together a little bit the material, but if it didn't, then I will gather by pulling the thread. So let me take out the pattern, and I will take the front, and then I will go shoulders with shoulders, and then I will search. This uh, material has a nice smell, like a older, it's an old vintage thing, has this sense, which is very nice. So I will pull it just a little bit you see like that then i'll stitch it see now let's do the other side So now the pattern says that do the sides. Instead of doing the half inch, I'll do three quarters, just because this pattern is a little bit bigger than my customer, so I kind of take it in a little bit. Actually, I'm going to search it first. placing a few pins so the material doesn't displace too much in my sewing. Other side. So the 
first step is sew on the corner to make it. Right sides of material together, clip here, pressing open in front, upper, in back. Okay, that's the center. And I love to do those uh, patterns following their instructions. It's like uh, building a Lego kit. Yes. Notches with, with notches, you see? And then here, same. Now we will open. I don't the the shoulders. Remember, this part is a little bit bigger, so it accommodates the blades here. You see, nobody will notice that, but the body will fantastically. And I should now that I'm here, I should open as well the seam allowance on the sides. Oh wow, this material is fantastic. I will burn it a little bit to see the, the composition. So next step, join center back seam here. Let's do it. But I think I should search this one first. Just give me one sec, I'm coming back. I came back. Okay, so let's sew the back, the center back. There we go. And then, next step, sew the front and under collar right sides together. Turn the seam allowance at inner edge of upper collar and front facing then stitch close turn edge turn facing to inside okay so we will this is the under collar we will find the center and then we will sew this one here and then it's just a straight stitch so you see has the notches so you join the notches and makes everything easier. It's not like you need to pin, but if you pin it, it's just easier. Oh, seam allowance, half an inch. Okay, this me, I will have done it three eighths. That's what I wanted to say. Next step, turn under the seam allowance at inner edge of upper collar and front facing. Then stitch close to turn edge, turn facing to inside. So what does that mean? We have to clean that. So we are going here. This is my center. And then we will sew it that way here, like that. It's a little bit tricky, but it can be done. So with this, we sew like that. See, let me do it again. So 
this is the color goes like that and then what I'm going to do I will sew it if it's too difficult you can just sew it by hand huh? don't complicate your life but I will just sew it by machine Just stitch it. I think just on here. You see, and then I'll pull it, and then the collar is sewn. See? Now I'll sew the other side. This size is easier. We are just going to do like that. And then just so the other part want the color and then pull it and then you have your color done see okay your color like that see Okay, so let's see the next step. Next step, cut strip of material one and a half inch by four, fold lengthwise through center, turn in one quarter inch at side edge and stitch. So belt strap to under arm seam circle. So it's marked already. So let's do that. So I will mark again where my belt loop must be. There you go. Now let me do the belt loop. Okay, let's see if we can turn this in. I'm too lazy to do that. I will show you how I do it in another video. Too much work. I was trying to follow this, the instructions, but those instructions are not really. Okay, so this is the mark, so I will put my loop here. It doesn't have instructions for the loop, but I think the best way to do it is to, to sew it like that, you see? Like that. See, this is my mark. So I'll sew a little bit under the mark. Then I will sew it like that. That way remains clean. And then I will do the same the other side. So I go like that. This time I will sew plain like that. Then I fold it the other side and sew it again. Like a French seam. And see, it looks nice and clean. Let's do the other side. Again, I saw under the mark and then fold it, so over the mark. My first side is done and then do the same thing at the other side. For the pocket, I will do I'm marking the pocket in a cardboard. And then I see that the seam allowance is half an inch. Oops, half an inch. So I will just leave half an inch of seam allowance. This is not important, this part. Well, it's important to have it cut it out. So, I will now cut it out. No, I don't, I don't use my scissors for that. Sorry. Let me check. No, they need to be a little bit more rounded. So that's better. Okay, because the seam allowance is 
half an inch. I will make a stitch almost half an inch, almost, but not yet for half an inch. I'll do this at the other pocket. There you go. Now I will make my top stitch with a regular stitch. Like that. And then the other side, same thing. That. Then my next step, I will pull this thread and then I will iron it. Now let me see how it looks. So basically it has top stitch here. So we will just sew the top stitch with the top stitch. There you go. Now let's prepare the other one and then we will mark it. I will make sure that my two pockets are exactly the same size, yes. And now I will mark where I have to place the pocket. I should have done that while I was cutting it, my mistake. Now, I know that I can just do that. I'm securing my pockets with pins before sewing. Now the other pocket. There is one seam that is not in the instructions that I will add. All tailors should do that. Uh, this will be the lapel and see how this is not flat at all. So I will add a seam to make this fall nice. So the lapel start around like more or less like there. So I will top stitch here this side. And then, when the lapel goes like that, then I will stitch this side. Let me show you. I have my pattern, and this is where the belt will be. So this is my front, and this is uh, the loop, so the belt will be around there. So where the belt will be is where the lapel will stop, you see? The lapel will go like that. So what I'm gonna do, I will mark that point and my inside top stitch will be until there and then from there will, will be outside. I'm marking this point. Let me show you why I did that. This is the side that is not stitched yet, this. And this is the side that I stitch. If you see, Look, look how it looks, this one. I haven't ironed anything. Look how this one already look flat and nice. After I iron, that will look amazing. So I will sew this one from this to the bottom, this side, and the other, this side. Okay, so I'll start with this part. I'll go as much as I can underneath the collar and then I'll sew. Sorry, I'll start first better with this side. Mm. 
Now I will take the seam allowance to the other side. This one was for the facing and this is for the body. I will skip a little bit, making sure that I'm pulling. There we go. Okay, so they are showing me how to finish the hem. I'll do the hem last. Then they want me to tack the inner edge of face into position. And then we will sew the sleeve. First sewing the back seam. And they want me to do a top stitch. Uh, just to make it nicer. We'll do it. And uh, then they say to sew the sleeve into armhole. It's in, in fullness of a sleeve and making a flat fell seam. So they want a flat fell. Okay, we will do a flat fell. And then for the tie bell, turn on line indicated. Right sides of material together and join seams edge, leaving part of seam free for turning. Turn right side out, then a slip stitch edge of opening together. Yeah, we can do that. And then we will press it. Here are the instructions for pressing. Okay, let's just go. These are my sleeves. Okay, let's start sewing. I will join this and this. I will just pin it like that. And then pin the other and then I can sew. So we have done flat fell stitch before. What you do, you cut this seam allowance and then you fold the other side. Let me show you. We have other videos with the flat fell. Now I will place my seam like that and then I will fold it. You can iron first just to have a nicer finish, like a, to control better. But I can do it without ironing, you see? Because this material is very crispy. So I can fold it and then I'm sure that I'll be okay. It looks really nice. Now we will sew the other side, search, and that's it. Let's do a French seam. I'll sew the other and then I'll search and then I will put the sleeve on the body. So now I'll search and now I will make the hem to the sleeves. From here, I will stitch a little bit so when I fold, it will fold easier like that.
now we will do the other one. Now we will sew the sleeves. This is the back. So this one goes this side. And this one goes this side. And um, we have here marks where we are supposed to put them together. When I sew a sleeve, I always run a stitch first. But they didn't say that. See, it's too big. So yeah, I have to run the stitch on the and then we can sew the sleeve. Let me run the stitch first and then we will do it. Usually I run the stitch with the long stitch and then I'll go like that. gathering just uh, gathering I'll go and to the other side. Now we are going to do the hem. I already marked it. I will going to fold here and here. First I will prepare the facing for the hem, folding it this side, folding it like that. And then just uh, folding back like that and then I will I will start my hem from there I'll do the other side too but before I'll make sure of pulling out these corners I have a trick just by pulling with the scissor like that we are good to go see so good let me do the other side before I will stitch it a little bit here just to secure the seam in. See, it looks nicer. Now I can proceed and do my hem. that's my last step before I work with the belt after this step this will be completely ready what I'm gonna do I will tack the facing to this pocket so the facing doesn't open you see for that I'm going to use a needle I would thread with a quadruple thread go in here like that and then I will do a chain stitch a little bit more I'm almost there probably three more chain see 
Yeah. One, two more, just in case. And then go through it. Finish. And then I'll stitch it here. It will be inside the pocket, so it will be okay. It won't be visible to the other side. And you see it has some ease to move, but it won't open. Okay, I will do another here. So two better than one. I have this, this thread. They, they just come with the chain and you just sew the thread and that's it. Now do the, this at the other side and it's all done. The rope is done. Now I'm going to sew the belt. Also how pinch because I will open this, the seam. I will open that seam so it looks better. Okay. So I open the seam so it will look more flat when I sew it. So until here and then I will leave this space without sewing and then I will start sewing again here. Cut the corners and put it inside out. Do you know what I, I leave this one for the last? Other, other seamstress will have started with this. But this is my least favorite part. When I have to turn this one, I don't know why I'm so lazy. I don't know, maybe it will look better if I do a top stitch, right? Let's do a top stitch too. Let me turn the other side. Okay, now I will close this gap, it's too big, I will close it a little bit. I left it very well open because it's easier just to turn, but I don't need to finish that big of the hole by hand. So I left just that, just that tiny piece here. And now I will close this one by hand. I'll use the thread double for this and then I'll go like, see, go like that. Now I will press everything and uh, do the top stitch and my job is done. I iron and now make the top stitch all around. Now my rope is done and the last step is just to, you know, to give it a super steam. Hey guys, that was all for today. This is the rope all done. I really have fun doing it. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe. Bye.